I'm going to share with you the 10 keys to unlock what I call your quick brain. Right? These are the 10 things scientifically proven to help you be faster, smarter, and better, to optimize your brain health and your fitness. Um, now, every single thing I'm going to say, nobody's going to debate. Right? They're going to say, yes, of course. But common sense is not common practice. So what I'm going to ask people who are watching this is to rate yourself 0 to 10. How well am I doing in this one area? Like in terms of how I'm eating and exercising or something. And then you'll notice, everyone wants to know what the magic pill is. There's no magic memory pill. There's, there are magic memory processes, right? If everyone wants to know the one silver bullet, you have to do all of these things because that's what falls within the focal point meaning the 80-20 the rule, the 20% that gives you 80% of the results, results and the rewards. So really fast, the 10 keys for unlocking your quick brain. Number one is good brain food, right? Good brain food, because you are what you eat. What you eat matters, especially to your gray matter. What you eat matters, especially to your gray matter. So we did a whole episode on my favorite, top 10 favorite brain foods, and I show people how to memorize it in two minutes. I mean, it's a while, but there's certain foods that are really good for your brain. Blueberries is like, I call them brain berries and avocados and the good fats and, and, and all of them. So there's 10 of them that I recommend. Um, and so they're really, they're, re they're really excellent. They're very neuroprotective and such, uh, including dark chocolate. So dark chocolate is uh, it's good. What's good for your mood is generally good for your mind. But so a good brain diet is number one. So just rate yourself on a scale of zero to 10. How, how good is, uh, is your diet? Alright, number two is killing ants. Automatic negative thoughts, your self-talk. And people get so addicted to these things like, you know, complaining and whatever you're rehearsing, you're just, you're literally rewiring your brain to get more of that. It's not law of attraction, there's a law of action that's going on, you know, that makes it, because all behavior is belief-driven. And so you're wiring your brains to be really, really rehearsing those things. That's why they say a fearful person dies a thousand times, like a coward dies a thousand times in their mind you know, and, and not care, like a brave person dies just once. Because every time you're rehearsing, oh, I'm scared of public speaking, you do it over and over again, not only do you get the fear of it every single time, because your imagination, your mind doesn't know the difference between something you vividly imagine and something that's real. Literally, if you were to, if you were to put on a brain sensing device, the same parts of your brain that would light up if a dog walked in, you're, you see what parts of your brain lights up, and if you imagine that dog walking in, the same exact parts of your brain will light up. So the mind doesn't know the difference. It's the most powerful tool you have is your imagination. But going back to the power of killing ants, you know, our thoughts are things and it's improve, you know, activating our imagination. So, you know, don't do it to rehearse your fears and the things that are negative, right? Only have thoughts of things that you want to come that really happen. So the third thing, exercise. People, really, we know. Number four, brain nutrients. And this is a subject that comes up because, um, you know, a lot of people travel, they have fast food lifestyles, and. You know, but maybe they're lacking a certain supplements. Number five, we know who you spend time with is who you become. Literally, you have mirror neurons, and your mirror neurons in your nervous system is when you can watch a sport or watch a movie and you can feel what they feel. Who you spend time with is who you become because you're imitating their habits, their behaviors, their thought patterns, and everything. If you're around nine broke people, you're gonna be the 10th. It's not just your biological networks or your neurological networks. Analyze your social networks. Sixth thing for your brain, clean environment. We know a clean environment is good for your brain. At an anecdotal level, you know when you clean your desk or you clean your laptop off, you know you have clarity of thought, right? But I don't just mean that, I mean clean air, clean water, because there's a lot of pollutants that's, you know, that's not good for your cognition. So from there, we have number seven, sleep. This is a big one for so many people. I mean, sleep is so important for your brain for three reasons. Number one is where you consolidate short to long-term memory. Everyone who pulled an all-nighter back in the university, that hurt you because you need that sleep. Number two, it's where you clean out the plaque that could lead to brain aging challenges. And that's, that's what the latest research is saying in terms of leading to dementia and such. And then the third reason is because when you dream. Because when you are working all day and you're learning all day, your brain doesn't shut off at night. At night, it's more active. People don't realize that. You think it's just not happening. It's actually more active. And it's coming up with solutions. And it's integrating stuff in the form of dreams. But you, when you wake up, most people forget their dreams. Number eight is brain protection. I work with a lot of athletes, high performer athletes. Concussions are a big deal, yeah. right? You know, and I've had a number of TBIs, you know, traumatic brain injuries. But not 
not just that, you know, I did a whole episode on um, electromagnetic fields. And I read recently that 90% of kids sleep with their phones underneath their pillows. And then finally, nine and 10, ninth key to keeping your brain alive is uh, new learnings, right? The neurogenesis and neuroplasticity means neurogenesis, you could create new brain cells the day you die. Science never thought that. Neuroplasticity is saying you could create new connections, meaning that Einstein's brain wasn't bigger than any of ours. In fact, it was, it was smaller, but parts of his brain were very highly connected because he would do these theta state brain um, thought experiments. And every single time you have a new thought, you may create new connections, right? And so the way to improve neurogenesis, neuroplasticity, two things, novelty and nutrition. Finally, number 10, stress management stress management, meaning people don't realize it because it's invisible, but it's like, you don't realize how much stress you're under until you're on vacation or you're getting a massage. You don't realize because it's all there all the time. It's like the, the fish that they don't see in the water because it's there all the time. So what are we doing to cope? The, you know, meditation, relaxation, massage, yoga, whatever it is that gets us